Thank you. Senator Van Hollen. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank both of you for your service and testimony. Uh, last uh, May, uh, Senator Coons and I uh, visited Sudan uh, to tell both government leaders as well as activists uh, that the United States stood with them in the transition uh, toward democracy. Uh, we met with uh, General Burhan, who looked us in the eye and said he supported that transition toward democracy. Uh, clearly, he broke his word. Uh, more importantly, he broke his word to the people of Sudan. Uh, another person we met with was uh, the Minister of Justice, uh, Abdul Bari, who was a bright light uh, in the transition, a strong supporter of democracy, rule of law. As you know, he has resigned. Uh, and what he said about what happened in October is, quote, what is happening now in Sudan is a military coup, unquote, unequivocal. I do think the United States has to say that out loud, too. And I agree with my colleagues who say that we need to do more to target individuals uh, who have been responsible with sanctions. Uh, and other tools at our uh, disposal. Uh, much has been said about the $700 million uh, in AID funding. I understand your answers with that. Clearly, we had to put that on hold. Of course, the big money is in the debt relief for Sudan. Uh, and after uh, Bushir was ousted and we had the peaceful re revolution, um, international financial institutions, right, the IMF, the World Bank, uh, agreed to provide Sudan with debt relief. There's $76 billion in indebtedness uh, by Sudan. Uh, and the IMF and the World Bank have put some of the tranches of relief uh, on hold, uh, right now holding up uh, $650 million in anticipated funding, uh, and a $2.5 billion 39-month IMF loan program that was approved in June of 2021, and a $2 billion World Bank grant program are at risk. The United States obviously plays a very important role in both those international financial institutions. Are we using our leadership there to make it clear that we will not support additional debt relief to Sudan until Sudan moves forward again uh, toward democracy and meets those conditions? Assistant Secretary Fee, why don't we? Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Uh, absolutely. In fact, uh, we were leaders in uh, early reaching out to the World Bank and to the IMF uh, to arrange this pause in assistance. Uh, and as you've noted, the figures you've provided, I have slightly different figures that were provided to me. But what, what matters is that they're big uh, and they are having an enormous impact. And that's what we wanted to do. We wanted to make clear that it, the United States and the international community would not have a normal relationship with Sudan if the transition was abandoned. So absolutely, that, that's our posture and policy uh, in the international financial institutions. Good. I mean, you would agree that's where our main leverage is at this point, right? Ab absolutely. It, the, it's, the scope is very significant. And there's an argument uh, that the military have their own uh, um, sources of income and that they're not directly affected, but if the economy collapses, because of this major shock due to the withholding of this large-scale uh, amount of assistance, uh, it will engulf their commercial interests as well. Got it. Um, just a, a, another question, Assistant Secretary uh, Fee. With respect to the opposition, we have a very broad-based civilian opposition, uh, and many, of course, are still uh, protesting in the streets. Uh, they've been subject to beatings and violence and killings. Uh, as we support the UNITAMS process, which I understand we do, correct? Uh, are, are you going to make sure that all the voices of the opposition are included in that process, uh, including those uh, who don't want to have any dialogue right now with the military government, uh, which is understandable? Uh, how are you going to make sure that those voices, the opposition, are included in whatever process UNITAM moves forward with. Thank you, Senator. We're in the happy position of uh, dealing with Sudanese uh, civilian stakeholders and voices that will demand uh, to be part of defining the future of the country. Uh, the, my understanding from the special representative of the Secretary General is that uh, all uh, uh, groups that are uh, committed to this change have agreed to sit and, and consult with him and talk to him. Some of them have not wanted to make it public, 
uh, but everyone is looking uh, for uh, how to build a collective path, uh, collective pressure, uh, and identify a common vision and common ground. I think unanimity is probably not feasible, probably not feasible in any political system, uh, but certainly not there. Uh, but definitely, uh, when I have had the chance to speak to Sudanese people, women, youth activists in the resistance committees, families of those who have been martyred, uh, they're all, uh, they all share a lot of uh, uh, concerns and interests and plans for the future, and I think there's a real possibility to knit that all together. So that's why we are trying to play a supporting role to UNITAMs and to work with other critical regional actors such as uh, the African Union, which as you'll recall played an important role in 2019. Uh, to help broker the constitutional declaration. Mm -hmm. So we're committed to making sure those voices, and we're using the programmatic resources that the deputy administrator has described to help build the capacity so that they can engage effectively in that, in that transition discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you.